Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Benedin, and for today's video, we're going to be doing another sunscreen review. Today, we're going to be talking about the CosRx Aloe Soothing Sun Cream. This is an SPF 50 plus, PA of 3 plus. I picked this up from YesStyle at the time. It was retailing for I think like $12. The price does fluctuate because this is an Asian sunscreen. So the day that I am recording this, I see that it's on YesStyle for 25% off, and it's going for $11.70. And with that, you're going to get 50 milliliters of product which is about 1.69 fluid ounces. This is a Korean sunscreen and they are sharing some of the third-party testing as far as verifying the SPF claims. Korea Dermatology Research Institute shows that it comes out with the SPF of 54.1. Some other ones come out with a 62.1, a 60.6. So SPF testing, especially when done by a third-party site, really varies as far as their method that they're using, what type of testing that it is. So the ratings are going to look a little bit different but I think it's safe to say that you're gonna get at least an SPF 50 which is what they are advertising it as as far as the claims on here it says that it's formulated with aloe extract which is water butylene glycol aloe arborescens leaf extract 55,000 parts per million it says this sun cream protects skin against uva and uvb rays while hydrating the skin as far as the filtered actives in here it contains octanoxate tinosorb s and silazole amyloxate and titanium dioxide it also has some antioxidants and licorice extract which can actually be good for like regulating your sebum production so for my oily girls who have some some excess sebum this can help to kind of like tame that down a little bit this does contain alcohol in it and it also contains fragrance the fragrance for me it was a little bit intense it comes off as sort of like a florally almost like it's trying to give you like a refreshing scent to it but for me it was a little bit overwhelming I found myself sniffing throughout the day and like having more of like a watery nose because of the fragrance so just keep that in mind the fragrance does dissipate slightly the longer you wear it but for me it wasn't enough where I like I felt like it actually 100% went away the fragrance was still there for me although it does contain alcohol I did find that it was still pretty moisturizing so let me show you the texture of it a lot of the Korean sunscreens that I've been trying have been like this milky very light watery type texture to it this one is not that this one is very thick as you guys can see um, and it goes on like a very thick moisturizer it feels thick it feels uh, moisturizing but it's still pretty lightweight so this is what it looks like after I rubbed it in on my skin so on day one when I tested this out I put on my normal skincare which includes a moisturizer and then I ended it with this sunscreen as my final step as you guys will see when I did this, I experienced a lot of pilling. I don't know what was going on, but the pilling was out of control. It was basically pilling everywhere, but I saw a lot of it kind of around my jawline. I think I decided to actually wash it off and start over because I wasn't in a rush. Um, and I decided to wear it day one with just no products underneath at all because I was like, I don't know what's causing the pilling. Is it the sunscreen or is it my products? So I wore it just on bare skin, just washed my face and then used that as my sunscreen moisturizer, the only product I had on my face. It wasn't pilling as much as it was pilling when I had other products underneath, but I was still experiencing some pilling, which was annoying for me because that tells me that maybe it's not necessarily my products underneath. Maybe it is the sunscreen if I'm still experiencing a little bit of it. But that that being said the pilling was not as out of control as it was when I was wearing it with other products it was kind of like just that annoying pilling that would end up around my jawline and in my hair I watched a lot of reviews on this sunscreen and everybody seems to say that it doesn't leave a white cast and I was very confused because to me when I look at this I'm seeing some blue hues like I'm not seeing white or gray I'm seeing like a bluish hue to it so I wanted to show you what it looks like in different lightings I feel like when I'm looking at it in my bathroom lighting I'm kind of seeing some gray but then I would like rotate and try it in different lighting and I wouldn't see it so I'll just insert all of those clips from all the different lighting I did it in my bathroom like directly in front of it and then I did it to the side of my bathroom lighting and I did it in the Sun and then I did it in 
in direct sunlight just so we could see what it looks like. And after looking back at all of those clips, I think the issue isn't that the sunscreen is leaving a white cast on my skin. I think it's that the sunscreen is sticking to the hairs on my face, which is resulting in it looking like there's something there that's not fully blending in or ever did blend in. So I would see kind of a white blue residue in the hairier parts of my face and i'm realizing that i actually have a very hairy face i didn't know that until the sunscreen like i showed you guys just now when i do it on my hand or areas of my face where i have like no facial hair whatsoever or peach fuzz then it looks clear and it looks fine but besides the peeling and the slight cast that i actually do like the actual formula of this i think it dries down nicely at first when you put it on your face it feels a little bit tacky but then when you let it dry it dries down pretty nicely and that tacky feeling goes away pretty well it gives like a hydrated look very slight sheen like a healthy glow but it's not oily like at all and it's also not drying so or matte so it's kind of that in between and i think that looks really good on my skin um, even after wearing it for two hours when i came back i look a little bit shiny because i do have natural oils i look shiny in my oily zones but i don't look greasy like overall in my face especially in my cheeks area and my drier areas i thought that it looked pretty decent reapplication still left a slight cast and i was still experiencing having it kind of build up in my hairier areas <laughs> if you will overall the reapplication was okay it spread okay um and it wore fine i guess once you got past the pilling i don't know i just mm, see oh look 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 i've been like touching my hand and look at that that's what i mean by the pilling even on my hand where i have nothing else on there and put this on top I'm getting the pilling there so the next day that i wore this i wore it with my acne serum because that's not something that i want to get rid of and it took me a very long time to get my skin like this so i didn't feel comfortable skipping my acne serum so i decided the next day to wear it and then put the sunscreen on top of that but i did skip the moisturizer the pilling was worse again so maybe i'm i'm wondering if my acne serum is what's causing the extreme pilling um, and the, like something in there is just not, it's not working for the both of them. But personally, getting rid of my acne serum is not something that I want to do. So all that to say, if you are wearing other products underneath this sunscreen, I would be careful. Maybe try out each layer and see which one is causing the pilling or the extreme pilling because they're still pilling even without any product on. But see what's causing that and I don't know, you decide if you wanna keep using it, if the pilling is too annoying for you or if it's fine. But for me, I'm not skipping my acne serum. I will gladly replace the sunscreen with something else. The last day I wore it with makeup and it actually applies nicely with makeup. And I will say it applies nicely with makeup if you make sure that you let the sunscreen completely dry and then put makeup on top of it. The first time I tried it, I was in a hurry and I put the makeup on and the sunscreen hadn't fully dried yet and that didn't really work out very well. There was a lot of separation and it just sat funny. But when I did let it dry, which is what you should be doing, letting your sunscreens completely sit for a bit before you put another product on top of it, but when I did let it dry and I put the makeup on top, it looked really nice. I feel like the finish was just very light underneath and to me it almost felt like a primer like a good primer base to put makeup on top of. So it sat well, it glowed nicely. I feel like it did help control my oils. Like usually when I wear makeup and I come back two hours later, I look like very shiny, you guys have seen that. But with this, after two hours of wearing the makeup in my T-zones, I didn't look as oily as I would normally. So I like that there was some oil control something going on underneath and I like that how that looked I probably wouldn't recommend this to reapply with makeup I did try it out with a beauty blender and I found that when I was patting with the beauty blender I didn't experience as much pilling as I would when I was like rubbing it in so it does work to like pat the sunscreen on top of makeup or even when you're applying it the first time pat it down instead of rubbing it I felt like it was picking up too much of the product 
So yes, I would recommend this to be worn underneath makeup, but I would not recommend using it to reapply on top of makeup. So my overall thoughts with the COSRX Aloe Soothing Sun Cream, I would say that if you're someone with a deeper complexion, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to you. The cast wasn't that bad, and I think I would still be able to wear it out and about, but it's not 100% like clear. Posted a poll on my Instagram because I was really confused when I tried it on and I had a white cast. And I asked you guys if you could see it in the video clips that I was sharing and it was clear that you guys could see it. So I'm glad it wasn't just me. As far as people with oily skin, I would recommend this because it does have some oil controlling factors to it. I do think it still works for pretty much all skin types. If you are more on the dry side, you might have to wear a moisturizer under, but then adding the moisturizer under might increase your pilling, so I don't know. But if you're like normal to oily, this might be a better option for you. And then for people with sensitive skin, I didn't have any sensitivities or irritation to the actual product on my skin, and I also didn't experience any breakouts from it. I did, however, have some irritation as far as the fragrance, and that was more like, my nasal passages were like, this is too much fragrance for me. But the actual like stuff on my skin, I didn't have any reactions or irritations to it or breakouts whatsoever. And then lastly, for people who wear makeup, I think it'd be a good option to wear underneath makeup. I liked how it looked. If you were to reapply with this, I wouldn't recommend reapplying over makeup. It works fine to reapply on its own though. So those are my thoughts. Purchase as far as my personal preference because of the white cast, the pilling, the fragrance, it just wasn't that pleasant of an experience. But the finish of it, I do really like. But that's it for today's video. If you liked it and it was helpful and informative and you enjoyed watching it, make sure you give this a thumbs up. That really helps my channel, helps the YouTube algorithm so that other people can see my videos. And if you've tried this CosRx Aloe Soothing Sunscreen and you loved it, let me know. If you tried it and you hated it, also let me know. And I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye.